Good afternoon and welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony that will mark construction of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Aujourd'hui, on participe à la cérémonie de la première pelletée de terre symbolique pour marquer le début de la construction du nouveau musée. Quelle meilleure façon de débuter cet événement qui marque une étape importante dans la vie de notre pays que de tourner nous ensemble notre hymne national. Now I would now like to invite musicians from the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra and the Youth Choir with students from Dufferin and Mulvey schools here in Winnipeg to lead us in singing this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, 2008 has been a remarkable year. We saw the government of Prime Minister Harper table in Parliament an historic bill to amend the Museums Act, seeking to create Canada's fifth national museum. All parties in Parliament supported the bill, and in record time, both Houses of Parliament gave their approval. In August, the Governor General named eight eminent Canadians to the Board of Trustees and at their first meeting in September, they appointed the first senior staff of the museum. Notre petite équipe d'employés appuyés par notre conseiller, conseil d'administration, les amis du musée et plusieurs partenaires a entrepris la tâche monumentale qui représente la planification de notre bâtiment et de nos opérations. At the same time, We've begun to plan for when the doors open in about three years. We've envisioned that through those doors, Canadians and indeed visitors from around the world will access challenging and inspiring content. We recognize the challenge that Winnipeggers, Manitobans, and Canadians have set out before us. And we recognize that the world is watching. Our imaginations have been captured by the iconic design by Antoine Predoc for our new home. Setting up a tent in Winnipeg in the middle of December for a groundbreaking ceremony is not a likely choice. Just as building a national museum outside of the national capital region may not have seemed at one time a likely choice. But you're in the tent with us today because you believed in the dream. But the presence ici attests que ce rêve est devenu une réalité. Your presence demonstrates a commitment and passion for what this museum represents, a place for dialogue, reflection, inspiration, and action. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Je suis ravi d'être ici aujourd'hui pour participer à la cérémonie d'inauguration des travaux de construction du nouveau, du tout nouveau musée national du Canada. This exciting initiative is the first national museum to be established in Canada in 40 years and the first one to be located outside of the national capital region in our history. The very history associated with the Forks makes this an ideal location. After all, it was here that many of Canada's first peoples met in an effort to resolve their differences peacefully. En construisant un musée entièrement consacré au respect des droits de la personne, nous honorons cette tradition de coexistence pacifique. Tous les ordres du gouvernement du Canada ont montré qu'ils avaient à cœur de favoriser le respect des droits de la personne et de lutter contre le racisme. Le Musée canadien des droits de la personne est un exemple parfait de nos efforts conjoints pour atteindre ces objectifs. The Government of Canada is proud to have played a leading role in the development of this national museum, along with the province of Manitoba, the city of Winnipeg, and of course, the generous donations of private sponsors led by the Friends of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Now I have both the pleasure and the privilege of introducing our next speaker. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper. Thank you very much for that uh, very warm Winnipeg welcome on a cold day. <laughs> Au moment où nous célébrons le 60e anniversaire de la Déclaration universelle des droits de l'homme, il va de soi que nous nous réunissons pour inaugurer le site du Musée canadien des droits de la personne. Today's ceremony is a historic moment in the story of human rights in Canada. Together, we are building a monument to Canada's embrace of humanity's highest ideals. This monument will fittingly be placed here at the Forks, an historic meeting place for Canada's Aboriginal peoples. This spectacular building that will arise on this site will be a place where future generations of Canadians and visitors from around the world can learn about the history of human rights in Canada and hopefully be inspired to build on this proud legacy. Pendant toute l'histoire de notre pays, des vagues successives d'immigrants fouillant l'oppression, la persécution et la tyrannie, ont trouvé un sanctuaire, la justice et la liberté sur nos rives. Ensemble, on a bâti le pays le plus pacifique et le plus prospère que le monde ait jamais connu. Canada wove these ideals into the constitutional fabric of our nation, beginning with the British North America Act, through the Bill of Rights, the Canadian Human Rights Act, and the Charter of rights and freedoms. And to this day, we continue to refine and expand our rights protections to ensure that all Canadians enjoy freedom of speech, assembly and worship, equality before the law, and fully representative and responsible government. J'aimerais remercier particulièrement l'homme qui a voulu rendre hommage à la noble tradition canadienne pour les droits de la personne, le regretté Izzy Asper. Ce musée, la réalisation de sa vision extraordinaire, sera le couronnement de son héritage. As Izzy himself said, in order to understand why a country is worth having, you have to know where it came from. This museum is the realization of an extraordinary vision. It will serve as the capstone of his legacy, and frankly, a real monument to how one person's vision and determination can bring something lasting about. I'd like to thank not just Izzy, but the entire Asper family, Gail and all of your family, for your tireless efforts to see Izzy's dream through to fruition. Often moved by deeply personal reasons, thousands of Canadians are contributing to Izzy's dream. They include, among others, I can just mention one, Wendy Hayward, Ms. Kawitz, of Winnipeg, whose son James was killed in Afghanistan last summer. Corporal Hayward Arnell, a man described by his commanding officer of utterly, as utterly fearless, gave his life defending the values this museum will celebrate. Freedom, democracy, and human rights. Protégeons tous ensemble, nos familles et notre avenir. Let us all remember it's the responsibility of all of us to defend these values and to keep our land, Canada, <laughs> glorious and free. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. The Canadian Museum for Human Rights will place not only Manitoba, but all of Canada at the forefront of human rights advancements worldwide. Please join me in welcoming Premier Gary Dewar. Thank you. Uh, merci, Patrick. Uh, Prime Minister Harper, elders. It is uh, interesting to note uh, that when this wonderful choir was singing O Canada for all of us uh, this afternoon, uh, that one of the members of the choir, his grandfather, is in the audience to help bless uh, the soil uh, later on. And I think that's very fitting uh, for all of us because this has always been a project that brought together the generations in uh, Manitoba and in Canada. It is certainly a, a ceremony uh, to celebrate today with the sod turning and the dirt shoveling exercise. 
but it's been made possible, as the Prime Minister said, by all of you that have come together to raise the funds. It has made, been made possible by the vision and the strength of Izzy Asper, the late Izzy Asper, who told us that we had to not only build this Museum for Human Rights, but we had to build it outside of the capital region of Canada uh, in Winnipeg, and we had to make sure it was a world-class uh, facility and program located here at the Forks. The announcement of making this Canadian Museum for Human Rights Museum a national cultural institution to be located outside of the capital region in the gateway of the West in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and to have all of those operating investments go into this national institution has made it possible to shovel this dirt today and move forward in this museum. I want to thank the Prime Minister on behalf of all of us for this leadership. I, uh, I, even, remember, I even remember one of the media questions. The, you know, why is this different? Well, the operating costs year over year over year, the net present value uh, is significant. Uh, but the passion and policy is even more important to locate institutions in all regions of Canada. And that's why this announcement today is also very, very significant. And what better place than the gateway to the West, Winnipeg, uh, and Western Canada in terms of human rights. We've had histories of uh, BC being the first province to have new Canadians have the right to vote, the human right to vote. We have the example of uh, the person's case in Alberta where our, all our daughters and all our sons are treated equally uh, with that case. We have, of course, John Diefenbaker from Saskatchewan uh, coming from Prince Albert providing First Nations people in 1960 the right to vote here in Canada. And of course, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in 1916 and 17, the debate took place, and women were the first ones to receive the vote, uh, the right to vote in Canada, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So that's a significant reason why, why Western Canada. And this is a vision that I think will be received by people and youth in particular across Canada and across the world. It's a very powerful message that against some of the, the issues of cynicism that we deal with every day, that there is indeed hope, hope that can start with one person standing up for the human rights of their fellow citizens here in Canada. And so that's why when we turn this saw today, we're celebrating a cultural institution that says to everyone from sea to sea to sea, that each and every individual can make a difference, and this Human Rights Museum will make sure that they all know that that is possible. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations. As your Deputy Mayor, it's an honor to be here today on behalf of Mayor Sam Cates. As we get shovels into the ground and bring Winnipeg a step closer, to the realization of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. This dynamic project symbolizes the spirit of our city, its rich culture, and our passionate citizenry. What began as the remarkable dream of, of Izzy Asper will soon be a shining star symbolizing a world of tolerance, unity, and acceptance right here in one of North America's most culturally diverse urban centers. I can tell you that Winnipeggers are immensely proud to be home to the only museum in the world dedicated to human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker needs no introduction. If anyone has lived and breathed this museum for the past seven years, it is Gail Asper. So leadership is a tenacity on grandement contribué à faire en sorte que nous célébrons ici aujourd'hui cette occasion exceptionnelle. She's led the Friends of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in a fundraising campaign that has raised $102 million to date. She's taken the dream, as we've heard today, of her father, the late Izzy Asper, uh, that he had for this museum, and she's lived it with unparalleled passion and dedication working to make the dream a reality. Please join me in welcoming Gail Asper. Oh, 
As you can imagine, this is a terribly exciting moment for me and my family and our passionately dedicated staff, our pathologically loyal volunteers, and our breathtakingly generous supporters. Évidemment, je suis tellement heureuse d'être ici avec vous tous pour célébrer cette occasion extraordinaire. Just over five years ago, I stood here with many others to participate in another ceremony for the museum organized by the relentlessly determined and heartbroken Mo Levy. And it was an unprecedented act of faith, and I thank him, because only days before, we had mourned the sudden death of our mentor and inspiration and taskmaster extraordinaire, my father Izzy Asper. And with the deal not sealed, zero funds raised and the leader gone, many thought the improbable, if not the impossible, dream of a National Human Rights Museum in Winnipeg died with him. But it didn't because we didn't let it. It was the faith of all these people that kept the dream alive and kept me determined until another leader, another leader appeared on the scene, the leader we needed, who came forward to make the dream a reality, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. My father only knew how to make big plans, and his favorite axiom was never do a little deal. He taught me and this community and this nation, even after his death, how to aim high and reach those stars. This museum was envisioned as a way to improve the social condition in Canada and around the world, to ensure that we as citizens never remain bystanders in the face of evil. It was John Peters Humphrey, after all, who 60 years ago this month said, there's a fundamental connection between human rights and peace. We will have peace on earth when everyone's rights are respected. I hope that we all remember December 19th, 2008, as the day in which a momentous and monumental gift was given to the world, thanks to the leadership of our Prime Minister and the faith of thousands of Canadians who made it happen. Merry Christmas to you all. Happy Hanukkah. Peace on Earth. Thank you. As a proud Canadian resident in Manitoba, I'm very honored to be the founding chair of the first museum, Canadian museum, outside of Ottawa. This project represents an unprecedented challenge and opportunity for Manitoba and Canada to create the North American equivalent of the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain. And we truly believe that in 10 years from now, the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada will gain the same recognition and bring the same prestige and economic benefits to Winnipeg, Canada. Thank you for joining us to celebrate this important milestone. Thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Forks has been a meeting place for thousands of years. As the Prime Minister told us, people of all nations have come to not only conduct trade, but to settle disputes peacefully. It is therefore fitting that we honour the land that will be home to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights through a laying down of tobacco ceremony. Please join me in warmly welcoming Jules and Margaret Lavallee. I love the opportunity to be here, to be here on this land which is, means so, so much to, to us as the original people. There are three generations of my family here today. Thank you, Premier Dewar, for acknowledging that. My granddaughter is part, her name is Sydney Cree. There's my granddaughter. She is part of the, the singer from Dufferin School today. And my son and my, and, and my daughter-in-law are going to be part of the ceremony. And of course, my wife. We're going to be offering tobacco where this ground will be broken. And, and, and that tobacco, that tobacco will be offered with prayers. And the, and the ceremony of the tobacco offering 
has been among us for years and years and years and years, and when we put it down, it's to honor a dream. It's to honor a vision. It's to honor an idea.